What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Infinite Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 5 of our Halo Infinite Lasso walkthrough. This is going to be the mission excavation site. So we're here at the end of the mission recovery where we just beat Chacklock and we had that cutscene. As we come out of it, it will say mission complete the tower and that will lead into excavation site. One problem you may encounter is you just had a fight with Chacklock and you probably took some damage at some point. So you might not have a full shield right now, so you won't have a checkpoint at this point. So if you die at any point, you'll get sent back to before the battle. That would be annoying to have to deal with. But one thing we could do is actually just hit start. Verify it says excavation site on here, so you know you're not going to restart the mission, the tower. We're restarting excavation site. That will just restart the mission, and it will give you full shields right off the bat. So you can get a checkpoint, so you don't lose any progress. And there's another benefit to this as well. Even if you didn't take any damage and you did get a checkpoint, you should still do this because this will actually take you across the bridge that you normally have to fight your way across. There's a bunch of enemies on the other side of the bridge and you have to kind of deal with them as you go across. But this way, you actually spawn on the other side of the bridge and there's a few enemies over there, but not nearly as many as there would be if you had to actually just walk across yourself manually. So immediately when you spawn in, you want to turn to the right and grapple out of the middle of the road and then climb up this wall over here and you will safely be able to get up and onto this area we're going to sprint ahead. There is a fob right ahead there, but we're not going to go there. We're going to go down to this road, and there's always vehicles, or one vehicle, I should say, on this roadway. So right now it's a Razorback. The other potential vehicles that could be on this road somewhere is a ghost, a normal warthog that has a chain gun on the back, or a mongoose. So I cut to another uh, version here where I got a mongoose randomly instead of a Razorback, and you're just going to have to take my word for it that you could get a ghost or a normal Warthog, because I was not recording when I got those two options. So it doesn't matter which vehicle you get, they're all going to work uh, for our purposes, which is just getting from point A to point B. And I'm just kind of slowly tracing the path I'm going to take along these roadways on the map to get to where we need to go. We basically want to go to the road right about here to the southeast of Excavation Site. And you could put the Excavation Site on your uh, map. You can't actually see the nav points when you mark a nav point on here, but you could actually see the giant beam of light coming down from the sky to where you want to go. So you could add that if you want. I didn't end up doing that here, but we'll uh, get going on this path here now. As we go along this path, we're going to take a left right about here, and then we're going to take a quick right, and then we're going to drift to the left once we have to turn again. And you're going to find that there's some enemies that I'm seeing in my playthrough here that you may not see. There might be some uh, minor tweaks between the enemies that spawn in for me and the enemies that spawn in for you. Like there's grunts to my side there. Those might be jackals for you. But as we approach the courier squad distress signal, we're just going to turn to the left. And I go off the path on this part, actually. So instead of going straight, I turn into the trees here. And uh, I'll take this path instead because there's generally a bunch of enemies uh, in that intersection that we were heading towards. So I just cut that part off the, uh, the pathway. We're going to take a right here. And then we'll go to the left as the road curves. And like I was saying, there's going to be some tweaks to your enemy situation probably. But it's not going to be a huge difference. So it's not going to be like, I have two grunts and you're going to get two hunters. They are generally the same uh, difficulty level in terms of what spawns in that you have to deal with. So nothing to worry about there. On the left, you can see that foreigner structure that looks like the middle of Ascension, the Halo 2 multiplayer map. So we're going to turn to the right once we see that. And this is about where we want to ditch our ride. So we're going to bail about here. And then we're going to go the rest of the way on foot. So we're going to go up and over these uh, this rocky area here. If you have a ghost, it's easier to just kind of boost up and over these rocks. Uh, you could do that if you want, or you could even try to you know go over these rocks with the mongoose or any of the warthogs. But it is a little more difficult with that. And I find it's just easier to just ditch the vehicle altogether, regardless of what I have, and just go on foot from this point on. You can see there was a jackal there, uh, but don't worry about him too much. Even if you do end up having a little bit of shield down at this point, it's okay. We're going to go down here, and you can see this is the excavation site. We want to go towards the left when we uh, approach this. You can see I'm throwing some grenades just to show you where to go. You can see there's a big outcropping uh, with a tree on the end of it. It's kind of a, like a peninsula of a land, uh, but it's not water that's surrounding it, so it's not really a peninsula. But you know what it is. You know what I'm talking about. Just head over there. There's a Spartan core on top here, which is what we're going after. You can see there's a couple of friendly marines here as well to provide some support. We'll head up here to the Spartan Core, open this up, and then we will go down and get the other Spartan Core in this area. Stay away from the uh, hole in the wall to the right because that will trigger the cutscene. We don't want to trigger that yet. It wouldn't be the end of the world if you triggered that accidentally, but just don't do it. It would make things more, uh, more annoying for us here. So we're just going to go into this building over here, which is where the second Spartan Core in this area is. And uh, it's up in the top of this room here, which you can't really see right off the bat. There's some catwalks surrounding this uh, upper area of the room. So you can find it up here. Open it up. I don't know why I got in that ghost. 
But now that uh, I have the Spartan Core, I will get in the Ghost just so I could speed over to the trigger to trigger that uh, that section in, that cutscene in. And then there will be some enemies that come in after we do that. So before I trigger this, I want to just kind of explain what we're going to do. A few seconds after the cutscene ends, we're going to pause the game and then go down to end game, which will bring us back out to the menu. At that point, we'll hit continue, which will load us back into this area, and we're going to jump into the laser and quickly fast travel to the recovery mission uh, on our tack map here. So again, we're going to start falling down towards the laser. We'll activate the tack map, then scroll down to the recovery icon and fast travel to that. So here we are. We're going to do it now. We're going to walk up to this area. It's going to trigger the cutscene. You could watch it or you could skip it. It doesn't matter. But once you gain control of your character again, you want to move around for a few seconds and then hit pause. Once you're in that menu, you want to scroll down to end game and then it will ask you if you're sure. You click OK. It will kick you back out to the lobby. But from here, select continue. Or if you want to be super safe, you could go to load game and select the save you want to load to prevent skulls from becoming disabled. That hasn't happened to me, but some people have said it happens to them. And they've said that going to load game first prevents that from happening. So you could do it that way if you want to be super safe. Either way, we're going to load in right here, and we want to grapple up this wall to get above the laser so we could drop down into it. Be aware that you want to activate your tack map before you touch the laser, because you can't actually activate the tack map once you're touching the laser. So, open up that map, go down to the recovery icon like we talked about, and we're going to just fast travel here. And if you did this right, you are now invincible. So, a super OP glitch that allows you to just do whatever you want now without taking any damage. You can even fall off the map and you won't die. So watch out for that. If you do end up falling off the map, you immediately want to end game and then hit continue. Uh, you want to try to avoid getting a checkpoint while you're down at the bottom of the map because you have no way of getting back up and out of there because you cannot die. So we're going to mark an av point right about here. And this is the first Spartan core we're going to get while we're invincible. So you don't have to worry about any enemies anymore. Just follow that beam of light. Again, you don't see the nav points when you put them on your map, but you do see the giant beam of light indicating where the nav point would be. So we're just going to grapple over here. I skipped ahead a little bit. This one is in the wreckage of a crashed pelican. So grab this. Don't worry about the enemies. Obviously, you're invincible. They can't do anything to you anymore. So we're going to hop over this, grab this Spartan core, and then we are going to hit our map. And we're going to put a nav point on Ransom Keep. You don't need to put a nav point here if you know where you're going, obviously. Uh, but we're just going to grab the Spartan core that is within the walls of Ransom Keep towards the middle of the map here. So right here, hit that. And then just follow this path. You can see the beam of light. I'm going to skip ahead to inside the walls or close to within the walls of the base. We're going to jump in now. And one thing to note is you do not want to interact with any of the objectives in this base. They will actually get you to lose your invincibility if you start interacting with them. So the only thing you want to do is just grab this Spartan core and leave. You could kill the enemies and that'll be fine. But if you actually try to interact with the silos or sabotaging repair bays, that will get you to lose your invincibility as well. So just get the Spartan core and then we'll head to the next one. We're going to mark this on our map as well and we'll head in that direction. So this next one could be found all the way on the eastern edge of the island, so mark that. We'll head towards this beam of light now, and I will skip ahead. There's some enemies over here as well, but obviously we don't need to worry about them in our current state of invincibility. And we're just going to go grab the Spartan Core, which is really all the way on the edge of the map. Surprised it hasn't fallen off, but we'll activate our tack map, mark that next nav point, or that next Spartan Core we're going to go get with a nav point, and that's going to be towards the middle. You could grab this ghost if you want. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's not, but I'm just going to skip ahead anyway. This one is also placed precariously close to a cliff. Not as close, but uh, there's a giant chasm kind of dividing the island right here. But once we get this one, we're going to place our nav point right about here. Uh, you don't have to be specific. We're just going to go jump to the highest point of the opposite island, essentially. So uh, that's just a rough estimate of where you want to put your nav point. So we'll go to that general area now. So I skipped ahead here again, obviously, just running towards that nav point we laid down. And I put it a little too far down the quote-unquote coast of this island that we're on. We actually want to be a little bit more towards the left. So you can see, if we just jump straight across, there's a bunch of those hexagonal columns. We want to go towards the left of that, which is just uh, a bunch of rocky area with those trees on top. So this is where you want to jump across. Technically, the highest point of the map is those hexagonal columns over there, uh, if you don't count the trees, I guess. But we want to jump to this rock uh, area, this rocky area. So just kind of run, jump and we'll uh, be able to grapple across. And uh, this will get us to the other side of the map, which we're not supposed to be in. So congratulations, we've skipped a few missions of Halo Infinite's campaign, but we're not done yet. We're going to skip a few more missions. But before we do that, even, we are going to go down to Fob Hotel, down at the bottom of this slope, and we are going to capture this. You could interact with Fobs, fortunately, so you can't interact with some of the controls in the Banished Outposts, but you could interact with the Fobs. So we're going to capture Hotel, and we're going to capture Kilo as well. So I'm just going to quickly skip ahead to fighting down at Fob Hotel. 
And when you're capturing these fobs, when you have invincibility, you just want to use your sword. That will ensure that you don't actually blast one of the enemies out of the area and then give you that annoying scenario where you have to leave and then come back after a few minutes. So this will just ensure you could easily kill all these enemies. And on top of that, you will get your shield back if at any point before you got invincibility, you took some damage and then never got your shield back due to the black eye skull. So this will ensure you have a full shield. You start getting checkpoints again. And we will capture this fob. After this, we want to lay down a nav point at Annex Ridge because there's going to be another Spartan core in there we want to grab. So after capturing Fob Hotel, you immediately want to just keep heading straight in the direction you're looking right now. There's going to be a platform overlooking this giant chasm. And on that platform, there's going to be a couple banshees. So grab one of those and then fly across the chasm towards Annex Ridge. I guess that wasn't actually a platform. That was just a natural formation the banshees were resting on. But anyway, we're going to throw the nav point down now. And we're just going to basically fly straight up towards this area. You can see there's two buildings that are on the edge of the cliff there. And we're going to park our Banshee right in between there. That's a good safe spot to land. You don't want to take damage from the Banshee because it will blow up pretty easily. But even if it does, it doesn't matter. You will uh, survive, obviously, because you have invincibility. Just your Banshee will explode and not be useful anymore. So just go in the wall of the base here. And the Spartan Core is right on the side. So we can immediately just go back, get into our Banshee, hop back in the Banshee, and we're going to mark the map with our next location, which is actually going to be Fob Kilo. We're going to take this base for future purposes, and then we will be able to uh, move on to the last Spartan Core in this section. So I'm just taking a roundabout way to get there, because if we fly directly over Annex Ridge, we'll probably be shot down by all the enemies in there, which wouldn't really matter because we could just, you know, walk to the uh, the fob here we're trying to take down anyway so the only thing you want to be aware of when you're in a banshee is if you get blown up over a big gap you will fall down and you won't die like we mentioned earlier and then you'll be stuck at the bottom of a pit unable to die which is not a good situation to be in so just be aware of that you always want to be over land ideally especially when you're getting blown up so you could just land back on the ground and continue on but here we are at Fob Kilo. It's a bunch of brutes here, so just take them out with your sword. Don't use the tank gun because, again, we don't want to blast them away and then have to, you know, walk around for a few minutes waiting for the game to realize they're all gone. Once we capture Fob Kilo, we will put a nav point down on the Spartan Core, which is southeast of our position. And this is the final one we're going to get in this area. You could go crazy and get even more Spartan Cores. You could get all of them if you want to. And you could also take out all the high-value targets while being invincible. You could take out... Uh, or you could deal with all the distress signals. Uh, you could really do a lot. You could get all the propaganda towers taken down if you want to. Uh, but we're just going to deal with Lasso at the moment, of course. So we're just going to follow this uh, nav point towards this beacon. And you could start upgrading your equipment at any time, really. I've just been holding off. I've just been collecting them. But I'll spend some right now. What we want to do is upgrade our grapple shot almost all the way. We want to get the three out of four upgrades. The shield core, we want to do four out of four upgrades. And then the threat sensor, we want to do two out of four, but we don't have enough to do all of that yet. So we have the grapple shot taken care of. It has three of the four like we want, and we'll have to wait on those other items for the final upgrades that we're looking for. So we will fast travel to Fob Hotel now, and we're going to grab a fresh Banshee. So I'll see you back over there. When you fast travel, you're going to have your back to the Banshees. So be aware of that. You want to turn around, do a 180, and then run towards that uh, big gap in the map over here where the Banshees are hanging out. And then we're going to do another 180. We're going to fly back up and over Hotel. And we're basically going to fly up to where we came to this continent or this island, whatever you want to call it, this part of the map. We're going to the highest point over here where we jumped across this big chasm initially. Once you get to the gap itself, you want to turn down and to the right. And you basically want to fly along this trench. We're in a trench run now, and we basically want to hide in here. Uh, instead of flying over the land where we are vulnerable and could get easily shot down, we're just going to hide in the trench here. So we're just going to navigate to the Pelican down part of the campaign where your Pelican gets shot down by three anti-aircraft guns. And you can see I'm flying low enough where if there are enemies to the left or right of me, they can't see me because I'm so low and in the trench. So just stay in there. Just kind of fly just below the rim of the trench and you'll be totally safe from anybody who may be up on top there. So we'll just keep going. You can see the anti-aircraft gun on top of the big cliff in front of us now. We're going to drift to the right and go down into this watery area. And there's going to be a Spartan core to the left of the elevator that leads up to that anti-aircraft gun. So we'll just keep boosting in this direction. We are almost there. We'll turn into left after this big column right here. And there will be the elevator. And we're not going to go up the elevator or anything, but to the left of it is the Spartan core as promised. So hop out. Grab this one, and then we'll hop back into the uh, the Banshee here. We could have put a nav point down there, uh, but I did not think of that. I did not do it in that playthrough. We'll put a nav point in the middle of the map. 
that is where the boss fight with Hyperius and Tavaris occurs, and that's where you crash land uh, in general. That general area is where you crash land and start this uh, mission to begin with, and then you come back and finish it there too. But there is a Spartan Core in the middle of the map here. So we'll keep boosting in this direction, and it's on top of the wreckage that I'm looking at right here. As you land, there's a decent chance that your Banshee will just fly off to the other side of the wreckage, which happened to me, and it's totally fine, but... When I turned back to look at my Banshee to get back in it, I couldn't find it in one playthrough, and I thought it despawned or something, but it was just sitting on the other side of the wreckage here, so uh, that is likely to happen for you as well, so just kind of go to the other side of the wreckage if you can't find your Banshee. It's probably down there, but uh, we will put a nav point up here. You don't really need to put a nav point up here, but why not? So we're going to just fly up here, and on the left side of the plateau, as we come over the uh, edge of the cliff here, there's a plateau, and on the left side of it, there's a Spartan Core, so grab this one. We have one more to go after this. This is turning into a Spartan Core collectible guide, more than a lasso guide at this point. But anyway, we have one more to go. We're going to mark it. It's on the edge of the cliff over here in a building past the anti-aircraft gun in this area. So we'll mark that if we want to. You don't have to, though. You could just fly over there if you know where it is. It's on the edge of the top right corner of this map, or this part of the map at least. So it's in this building. That nav point was not perfectly placed, but whatever. It's in this building right here. Head to the back. As you go through this door, you can see it already. Sitting by the wall in the back here. Grab this, and this is the last one we're going to grab. We can now upgrade the remainder of the things we want to upgrade. We'll go to our Spartan core, the shield core, and upgrade that for the fourth and final time. We'll go down to the threat sensor, upgrade that for the second and final time. And this is all we're going to do. You could do more. You could go get the other Spartan cores if you want to fully upgrade those three items if you really want to. But there really is no use for it in the strats that I'm going to use, so... We're going to drift all the way across to this point of the map, put a nav point down there, and where I put that nav point is where the mission The Road begins, and The Road is the 13th out of 15 missions, so that is how you skip from Excavation Site, the 5th mission, to The Road, the 13th mission, and once we get to The Road, we can just fly over the top of it, really, so we really skip the 13th mission, too. We basically fly from the 5th to the 14th mission. And the reason we could fly over here is because we're invincible, so the kill barriers that would normally just blow up our Banshee as we try to fly across here, that doesn't work on us anymore, so we could just fly through those kill barriers and uh, just go to the 14th mission. Why not? So skipping ahead, you can see the lighting has changed a little bit, and that's because the open world has a dynamic lighting system, so it could go from day to night and then back to day again. But for this mission, it's actually set to a certain uh, type of lighting, a certain uh, amount of lighting, so... That's why it will always change. It'll kind of snap into a certain lighting when you get over here. And we could just fly over the top of this entire road segment and go to the House of Reckoning at the end of it. But I found out in this particular playthrough that you could actually go too high. There's a sweet spot of not being too high and not being too low. Worst case scenario, if you're too low and you get shot down, you could just walk to the end of the road and get to the House of Reckoning. But the level I'm at right now is too high, so it's not actually triggering the next parts of the mission in. So when I fly and get to the end here... I'll get out of my Banshee and go towards these doors to go to the next mission, but they won't open up. So that means I just didn't hit the trigger volumes I needed to hit earlier in the mission. So I had to fly all the way back to the beginning and then just fly into this area at a lower altitude. So that's all we had to do here. If this happens to you, if they don't open up, that just means you were too high. Just go back. Or you could even just run back and then, you know, come back to the House of Reckoning on foot, which is totally fine too because nothing's going to kill you, so don't worry about that. But that's it for this one, guys. We have two more to go, plus another installment, which will actually get the achievement to pop, because if you just simply finish the Lasso campaign now from this point on, the Lasso achievement will not pop, but there is a way to get it to pop after finishing the final mission, Silent Auditorium. So stick around for that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The next mission is House of Reckoning, so I will see you guys there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the Scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.